guys, Natalie here and welcome back to Hey It's a Good Life. Happy Thanksgiving week to you guys. We are in the full swing of preparing for hosting Thanksgiving here. Have I ever hosted Thanksgiving before? No. Am I going to this year? Yes. <laughs> And I'm so excited to be hosting Thanksgiving, like truly. I, I love hosting gatherings and having people over and we're only having four people total at our Thanksgiving, so it should be pretty manageable. But what I wanted to say before we hopped into anything is that you guys made my birthday so special. Thank you so much for those of you who chimed in on the birthday vlog and shared with me something good that's happening in your life. It was really such a joy to read through those and it just gives me so much hope that <laughs> despite everything that's going on in the world, there are still good things happening. So thank you so much. The whole something good thing, that was such a joy to read through those. It makes me want to do those more often, like maybe once a month we could do something like that. I don't know. Let me know your thoughts. But it reminds me that this week I would love to hear from you what you're thankful for. That's something that we practice around here each Thanksgiving is just sharing something that we're thankful for and giving thanks for that as we break bread together. So before we go any further, drop me a comment down below or shoot me a message on Instagram. I'd love to hear from you. What is something that you're thankful for this Thanksgiving week? All right, now let's talk Thanksgiving menu. I have it here, very official menu on my phone. Now, I don't know about you guys, but there are like certain dishes that have just always been present each Thanksgiving meal over the years. And for me, now that I get to host Thanksgiving, I get to pick my favorites. So these are my favorites and this is what's on our menu. First off, my mom's green beans. Thank you, mom. Love you. Thank you for bringing those so that I don't have to cut them. <laughs> so we've got green beans, garlic green beans in butter, creamed corn, which I don't know that I've found like a set recipe for that just yet. If you have a favorite recipe for creamed corn, definitely let me know. I've also got mashed potatoes, which I think I might be able to say that I have fully mastered at this point. They are so good. I love making them with real cream and butter and garlic, and they're delicious. What are mashed potatoes without gravy? Sweet potato casserole. Now that's actually Tommy's dish. He loves to make that. It is so tasty. It's got like a pecan crumble on top. Turkey, now we're gonna talk about turkey in just a second because I actually have to pull it out and get started working on it. Pumpkin pie, which I've never made before, and pecan pie, which I have made before, but it's been a little while, so wish me luck. Speaking of food and cooking from scratch and all things food related, if you guys didn't know, this week Greenstock is having a huge sale on all of their planters and you can get an additional $10 off when you use my code GOODLIFE at checkout. So I just wanted to make sure that you guys know about that sale that's happening because I love getting a good deal on things and I want you guys to be able to get that as well. I know a lot of you guys have already signed up which has been really awesome to see. But yeah, I'm, so, I'm still loving the green stock. I did a video on this earlier this week, which I will link up above. This is my new green stock and it is absolutely thriving. All of my plants are so happy and so healthy. They're killing it out here. This thing is amazing and I see why people love them so much. So definitely check it out if it's something that you're interested in. You can grow up to 30 plants in a one and a half square feet of space, which is so cool if you're like me and you're growing food in small spaces. They've also got another one coming out soon, which you can pre-order and it's called the leaf and it's the same height, but it's got shorter tiers so you can grow more food. So something to consider if you're looking to spoil, spoil yourself this holiday season or give something to the gardener in your life. I don't want you guys to miss out, so make sure you take advantage of their sale this week and use my code GOODLIFE at checkout for an additional $10 off. Okay, so now let's talk about turkey. Please don't laugh at me, you guys, okay? I'm being honest with you here. We have four people for our Thanksgiving, so did I buy a whole turkey? No, because a whole turkey would be a little excessive. But I did buy turkey breast on the bone. <laughs> So it's a little different. It's not like cooking a whole turkey, but a lot of the same principles still apply, like making sure that you're seasoning your meat thoroughly before cooking, which means I've got to get these guys unwrapped and start salting and seasoning them for cooking tomorrow. Now I'm sure a lot of you guys are familiar already with this idea of seasoning from the inside out, but in case you're not, I would love to share with you some things that I've learned about seasoning. So let's talk simply about salt. Salt is a really key ingredient when it comes to all things food because it actually enhances the flavor that is already within the food. If you've ever had bread, if you've ever made bread without salt, you know what I'm talking about. It really doesn't taste like anything, but the minute you add even just that teaspoon of salt, the entire thing transforms into something luxurious and wonderful. And salt is so essential for our health 
and for our food. So today I'm going to be pulling out these turkey breasts and salting them liberally and maybe adding a couple other fresh herbs and spices as well. But some things to remember about salt. Here we have kosher salt, table salt, flaky Malden salt, and very fine sea salt. By salting these a day in advance, I'm allowing the salt to permeate through all of the protein and the protein structures, and it's actually going to inhibit those protein structures from uncoiling too much and becoming tough. So when we cook protein, it actually changes the structure of the protein and it can actually become really tough. I'm sure a lot of us here have had really tough meat before, but when you add salt, you denature the proteins and you change their structure enough so that they don't change so much during the cooking process. And thus they feel juicier and softer and not tough. Something like poultry, like these turkey breasts, you wanna make sure you're doing it at least a day in advance, which is why I'm pulling these out now and salting them today. Tommy has been perfecting his chocolate chip cookie dough recipe by adding a little sea salt on top. And I have come to really love these Malden sea crystals so much. If you've never had them, it's probably hard to see on camera, but they've just got such a unique structure and they're like crunchy and flaky. I know it's weird to like munch on salt, but they're delicious. However, this is not appropriate for turkey. It's more of a finishing salt, so this guy is out. Another salt I won't be using today is iodized salt because it can leave a lot of your stuff tasting metallic-y because of what they add to it. In iodized salt, they are adding iodine, but they are also adding like a caking agent to prevent the salt from sticking together. Now this is pretty much what's used everywhere in every diner across the world and every salt shaker across the world. Like this is a very common form of salt these days and it was originally developed to help with thyroid issues and gout, but honestly, we don't really need it anymore. Most of us do get enough iodine in our diets. I don't even know why I have this. This might've just been purchased in a pinch, but anyway, um, I won't be using this. I don't want this on my turkey and I don't want that metallic -y taste. So this guy is out, which leaves me with these two salt options. Now, I really enjoy using sea salt. However, you need more of it to do the job, if that makes sense. So because of its saltiness, this stuff, I tend to need to use more of it to get the same saltiness that I would get, say, from table salt or from kosher salt. Is it delicious? Yes. Is it appropriate for the turkey? I could use it, but I think there is a better option, and that is kosher salt. Now, if you look up a brine online or if you look up how to brine a turkey in your cookbook, you're probably gonna see that they use kosher salt. Because of its structure, it permeates into the turkey really well. So that's what I'm gonna to use today. Now, I don't know about you guys, but if we're gonna take the time to salt our turkey and make sure that it's nice and tender and juicy for Thanksgiving, we might as well take the time to cut some fresh herbs because what is Thanksgiving without a little fresh rosemary and thyme? So, so good. I absolutely love adding fresh rosemary and fresh thyme from the garden to just about anything, but especially a Thanksgiving meal. Those two flavors just really hit home for me. So let's go ahead and cut some fresh herbs.
and that is a wrap. My turkey is ready to go for tomorrow. Hopefully that turns out nice and tender and juicy. If you guys have any turkey tips, definitely leave them in the comments down below. This will be my first time cooking turkey this way, but using the same principles of using salt to keep things tender and juicy, adding some fresh herbs in there, I think we're off to a really good start. And I think tomorrow when I throw this in the oven, we're gonna add some butter and some garlic as well. If you guys enjoy cooking videos, let me know. Uh, at least a lot of you guys know, I would love to have my own cooking show or cooking series on here one day. But there's like a very specific way that I would wanna do it, which by the way, you guys were able to get me something really cool for my birthday. It's not here yet. I can't wait until it is. I get so excited just thinking about it, um, but it's going to make potentially a cooking show much more feasible so long as the belly bump doesn't get too in the way so we'll see but i'd love to have a cooking show if you guys enjoyed hanging out with me in the kitchen today definitely let me know so i can make more videos like this for you guys now it is time to get this turkey in the fridge marinating for thanksgiving tomorrow thanks for joining me today you guys it was great to be with you i hope you have a wonderful thanksgiving don't forget to leave me a comment down below and let me know what you're thankful for this year and if you're interested in that Greenstock planter, you can still use my code. Greenstock is having a huge sale this week, so don't miss out. Use code GOODLIFE at checkout for an extra $10 off. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!